Hi everyone, it's Adrian. Welcome back to Alternate and it is review week again already. And today I'm really excited to bring you guys a review of a pattern. And it is a free pattern and it's a pattern that is beginner friendly so it should appeal to a lot of people. Um, it is this. I'll hold it up in front of my face. This is the Hudson's Bay inspired crib blanket by Pearl Soho um, and you can find the, the pattern, it's free on their website. So what I love about this pattern, um, apart from it, the simplicity and it is all the one stitch, it's all the knit stitch um, and that makes row after row of garter stitch. Uh, so perfect for a beginner but it is a really nice blanket for, for a baby. Um, but the thing that I love pretty much the most about this pattern is the history behind the actual pattern which um, you know for me I did you know not being from North America I didn't know anything at all about Hudson's Bay Company but when I found this pattern I did a little bit of research and found that there is some heritage with this particular pattern so uh, traditionally this these blankets are made in England um, from wool uh, but it is from the Hudson's Bay Company which is a Canadian company I'm gonna pop this down so the story that I got from the website, the Hudson's Bay Company website, is that these really came into circulation around 1780 and were used uh, as trading items of trade with the Aboriginal people in Canada at the time. Now they call them the point blankets because they had little indigo lines woven into them and the number of lines or points indicated how large the blanket was and therefore what you could barter, uh, you know, beaver skins for that blanket. It didn't denote the worth of the blanket, but I guess size equaled worth, so it makes sense. What I really love about this pattern um, is just that it, it's such a clean design. You've got beautiful colors that you get to play with, so it breaks the monotony of all of that knit stitch, all of that garter stitch, um, and that it can appeal to boys and girls and anyone really. It doesn't even have to be a baby blanket. It could be um, you know, a nice throw blanket in the house. Hudson's Bay Company has been selling point blankets, the multicolor point blankets, very successfully for hundreds of years. So um, I think it's just sort of a, a great all-rounder. Now, there is no selvage on this pattern, so it just basically says knit all the stitches uh, and it explains when to change colors. However, just using knit stitch constantly at the beginning and the end of every row can kind of leave an untidy edge particularly if you're just starting out and you haven't really gotten the hang of your gauge yet or how tightly or loosely you knit. Um, so my suggestion would be just to add a selvage to it and because there's really no pattern, um, you know, you don't have to have 14, multiples of 14 stitch plus one or anything complicated like that, you know, you can get away with using a selvage of your choice. If I was going to do this pattern again, and I definitely will because I really loved it, I would just do a simple sort of slip stitch selvage, which basically means that the first stitch of every row is slipped without being knit onto the right hand needle purl wise. So as if you were going to do a purl stitch um, and then just slip the, the stitch across. Um, and that makes sort of a really nice neat um, knit stitch along the side of, the, of the, the work. So I think I would do that differently next time. Now this particular pattern by Pearl Soho does list uh, Anzulas for better or worse as the yarn of choice. I desperately want to knit this blanket in Anzula for better or worse. I think the colors are very unique. If you go to the Hudson Bay Company website and have a look at the original blanket, you'll find that the colors are somewhat muted. They were made from natural pigments that were found. There's no real significance to the colors or at least none that the company originally ascribed to them. The indigo is quite dark um, the green has a sort of icy mint uh, tone to it, but the Anzula for better or worse colors are really vibrant, so it kind of makes this a little bit more modern, a little bit different uh, to the Hudson Bay Point Blanket, but still staying true to the design. I did find it interesting that there was uh, a website I found that said that some Aboriginal people in Canada did ascribe meaning to the different colored stripes in the blankets. Um, and I think there was, uh, green was for rebirth, red was for hunting, yellow was for, I think yellow was for earth, earth. And blue was for water. I might have that wrong. If I, if it's wrong, I'll let you know. I got a little sidetracked. I did want to talk a little bit more about Anzula for better or worse. I haven't used it. 
but for me at least to import um, this yarn from America for this particular pattern would have cost 350 Australian dollars just for the wool alone. Now I do, you know, I understand it is a premium product, but at the time I just felt it was really steep, particularly for uh, a crib blanket. But the great thing is because there really is no restriction to size. I mean, you don't have to be that strict on the size for this blanket. You can just use any product that you want to use. You will, to achieve the same dimensions, need to know how to do a gauge swatch. And that's something that we will talk about at another point. And I think gauge swatching is really important as I think I keep banging on about. But, um, you know, I think you can use any product that you want to use. And I didn't obviously use this yarn. I used something that was acrylic that was a little bit more durable for, um, for a baby. But as I said, I would really love to use this product to do this, this project again. So finally, what I wanted to talk about for this pattern was the Ravelry page. Now it has a star rating of 4.5. So I think people are pretty happy with this pattern. You can find everyone, well not everyone, but a lot of people have put up their, their version of this on Ravelry. And all you need to do is search in Ravelry, um, the Hudson's Bay inspired crib blanket, and you'll find the original recipe from Pearl Soho. So you can see their finished object there, but you can also sort of have a look at, I think there's more than 500 others, um, and they all come in different shapes and sizes. They're all in different yarns. Sometimes they're in different fibers as well. People have done cotton versions. So you can really have a look at the diversity that you can create from just such a simple pattern. The last thing I did want to mention is that if you go to the Pearl Soho website to get the pattern, you'll see a comment section at the bottom and the staff at Pearl Soho are really good at uh, responding to people's requests. And I think they're very patient too, because there's got to be at least 50 people asking how they could substitute uh, one yarn for the other and how they could keep the same dimensions or how they could scale it up to make a, a full-size blanket for an adult. Uh, so if you if you want to check out the comments section there you can and you'll find probably um, the answers to any questions you have about it. So overall I really enjoyed knitting this blanket even though it was quite a lot of garter stitch or a lot of knit stitch but I found there were no surprises in the pattern. It performed exactly as was expected. Um, and I was able to modify it very easily with the help that was on the website. So it's a big thumbs up for this pattern, particularly since it's free. Um, and I thought that would be the best way to kick things off with the pattern reviews. So check that one out. I hope to see your guys' projects of the Hudson's Bay inspired crib blanket sometime in the future. So that's it for today. Next week is another podcast week. Um, and you'll have to stay tuned to find out what happens next week. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye.